they go up and one of the one of the able companies so you got able baker and charlie able company sets up on the flank and then baker also patrols up and kind of sets up to to come to their aid back to the book through my binoculars i had a good view of charlie's perimeter 400 yards away they were in a tight circle not more than 75 yards across halfway up the slope of turkey hill chinese machine guns and rifles infested the hill around them firing at any marine who moved charlie's people were thoroughly pinned down so picture this a a little circle all your your whole company maybe there's a hundred maybe there could be 150 but i think they've taken a bunch of wounded at this point they got a hundred guys in a little 75 meter circle and you're all pinned down and no matter every time you move every time his head gets stuck up you're getting shot at back to the book lee put his machine guns on the chinese who were firing into charlie's perimeter from the lower slope my three mortars had the same target Abel's machine gun and mortars raked the hill above the perimeter. Soon our tracers lined the sky and puffs of black smoke from the mortars dotted the rocky hill. Then the big shells from artillery and the battalion's 81 started to fall and the hill rocked with their explosions. Chinese soldiers scurried for cover. My classmate, pay attention to this, my classmate Jim Stemple led Abel's assault down the ridgeline and into the Chinese. The enemy soldiers had their heads down from the heavy covering fire, once again covering fire, and Stemple's platoon tore into them. Through the binoculars, I observed one squad of Temple's Marines led by a giant of a man in a flapping parka who swung a huge double-headed axe. The Chinese soldiers, seeing this great maniacal devil charge at them branding, brandishing a bloody axe, abandoned their positions in terror. So there you have it. I've never, I never, I don't even know where you get a battle axe in the midst of the Korean War, but this Marine right here attacks the Chinese, not with grenades, not with a bar, not with a machine gun, he attacks with a freaking battle axe. Back to the book, the Chinese quickly lifted their siege of Charlie Company and made a rapid retreat from Turkey Hill. As they fled Abel Company's downhill assault, they had to cross Baker's line of fire. Woody Taylor's platoon had come up to extend our line and every weapon we had was trained on the Chinese as they ran to the protecting slopes on the other side of the valley. Turkey shoot at Turkey Hill, our people called it. We were at rapid fire with the mortars and machine gun and machine guns, the bars and the and the rifles, even Kovar's rocket launcher. Few Chinese made it all the way across the gauntlet of exploding flame and steel. They dropped in heaps even before the Australian planes came down on them. We hadn't worked with the Australians before, and they were out to prove that they were as gung ho as our own Marine Corps pilots. They came roaring low along the valley from behind us, and when they passed above Lee's glowing pink vest, they dropped even closer to the ground. They're they're low enough to cut off the chink's pigtails, Kelly quipped. The planes had their their guns blazing, and the Chinese went down in bunches. The Australians made two passes. At the end of their second low-level assault, there were no Chinese soldiers left to shoot at. It took almost every able-bodied man that Charlie Company had to bring down their dead and wounded. Their overnight defense of Turkey Hill had cost dearly.